Welcome to Indigo Touch. Today we are talking about the Nzuza spirit. And something I feel like I should have said from the red go from the first video is that I won't be talking about signs and symptoms. I won't be saying, Ukuba, if you dream of this, you have Nzuza. And if this happens to you, you have Nzuza. Why? Because um, when we start doing this, it is a way of us creating a program. It is a way of us programming spirituality because I also did say in one video, Ukuba, our experiences will be different. They will never be the same. The manifestations will be different for everyone. So we will get to a point where even a mere headache is going to be something that symbolizes why you have another type of spirit. That is why we have a certain problem that still needs fixing. So what I will be doing in this video is explaining certain symbols and why we associate them with Inzuza. I won't be saying if you see this sim symbol, it means why you have Inzuza. I'm explaining why certain symbols are symbols that we have attached to the Inzuza spirit. Starting with, with large snakes. So large snakes are used as a symbol of Inzuza because in Zuzza we are we are associated with wealth, with power, with abundance. Snakes are a symbol of fertility, abundance, and transformation. Because snakes, the, the ones that lay eggs, I'm not sure if they all lay eggs, but they lay so many eggs. Many, many eggs. They have high fecundity. They are very fertile. And this is a symbol of abundance. And also snakes shed to grow they shed their skin when they are going into a new phase when they are growing in size and in width they have to shed their old skin and leave it behind as they bigger get as they get bigger so it is also a symbol of growth in other um in some in some instances and also the size of the snake matters because we say large snakes so in zuza as it is a presiding spirit the size matters in a dream. We will talk about snakes in, in the distant future. We will talk about snakes in general and even smaller snakes and um, discussing them. But how do we look at this symbol? But uh, large snakes for now, that is what we are talking about because they symbolize status. They also symbolize, um, they symbolize what you call, symbolize uh, abundance. Yes, yes, yes dreaming of water now water dreams are not all related to inzuza or is samanzi like i said in the previous video the water element is the element that symbolizes the heart emotions the left hemisphere the left brain so when we dream of water, sometimes it is showing us this current state of our emotions. It is not always a dream that indicates Kuba we are connected to water spirits. We are called to be healers uh, who work with water. Sometimes it is showing us our own emotional state. I remember Ukuba um, when I was still in a chaos, I used to have dreams of very wild water, uh, you know, water chasing you and just very violent water and at that time it was because i was harboring a lot of resentment hatred grudges anger i had unresolved feelings because i was a person who used to just uh, sweep everything under the rug but okay let's just move on let's just pretend like this didn't even happen and you know that really suppressed the intuition because at that time when umoya ofunuk sebenza it's hard to work in an environment where there is hatred there is is in thought that are clouding everything that is good that are clouding intuition that are clouding in creativity so at that time there was this dream of wild water and i got into a stage where i was crying over every Thing. everything made me cry see someone on tv crying i'd cry more than that person see someone crying in general cry with that person um even if the person is lying it's crocodile tears i'll still cry and i just needed to cry a lot 
during those times and it's a continuous healing process you know healing the emotional body uh it's a continuous healing process because as he is indoor they are not things we learned in one day so we don't undo them in one crying session so it's still ongoing but as time went on the dreams of the water got much clearer it was clear peaceful water beautiful water and that is when Gengoku, i knew Ukuba, okay we are getting somewhere we are healing so sometimes water dreams are not always dreams that mean Ukuba, you are called to be a water healer sometimes water dreams are speaking of our emotional side are speaking of our emotional brain of the heart they are dreams that show the state of our emotions the state of our intuitive side dreaming of mystical creatures in water so uh, this is mystical creatures or creatures like um, i'm so uncomfortable saying the names even in english so mystical creatures it is <laughs> so these are uh, creatures that we believe but they don't exist they are a myth but when you think about it everything that has a name is in existence because if it didn't exist why does it have a name so dreaming of these creatures we consider as mythical mystical creatures in water and um being part of water swimming in water and you are part of water it feels like second nature you can't even swim in real life but you are feeling it in the dream and also dreaming of yourself as part of water some people dream of themselves as part of a river flowing as part of a river some people dream of themselves as raindrops some people dream of themselves as this and that and that and that and that so that is uh, also another dream that we consider Ogoba. It means Ogoba, you are someone who is called by the waters. You are someone who is called by Inzuza spirit. And also being able to manifest is Indo. Now, um, there is this thing where we are so proud of manifesting is Indo. Zimbi. Like, um, if someone does me wrong, then they will have a car accident and <laughs> something like that. Um, that is when the energy is unhealed. As someone with Inzuza spirit, as someone who is gifted with this type of a spirit, um, when you are still in an unhealed state, the creative potential, the energy that could have been used to create, to manifest something beautiful for yourself is destructive energy, which is why you find us when I when I when I want someone to, to when I want this to happen to someone it happens their lives get ruined when they hurt me but it's a sign of being unhealed because at that time that creative energy is destructive energy and healing is a matter of transmuting destructive energy into creative energy so that we can speak life so that we can manifest in life um it's not a good thing it's really not a good thing it's i don't think it's something that we it's not like being able to hex other people being able to curse other people because it is a sign but there is something that is not healed within us and also um Zosa children is usually tend to be multi-talented like i said i used the structure of a river um to show ukuba just for us to study the what Inzusa spirit is all about now i'm not saying about all creative people have the Inzusa spirit this is why this video was so hard for me to make because i know ukuba uh, we could take one of these things and say ukuba okay I've dreamt of this, so I have in Zuza. <laughs> so it was a hard one to make. I feel like I have to clarify that. Um, creativity. Oh, no, no, with Inzuza, I usually very creative. I used the the river as an example. So when they put their minds to a certain thing about, oh, I'm going to do this. When they do it, they will succeed, succeed tremendously. But then the problem is when we are still in that unhealed state, you will do this. It will go very well. Get bored and then want to do something else it will go very well abandon that go do something else succeed at it just do very good at it abandon it go do something almost like how a river will form many different uh, tributaries the river will be will be flowing as one river and then it will branch into another one then branch into another one then branch into another one then branch into another one and you will find because the dendritic system sometimes this river is not even fully developed yet 
but Papambili, there's already another tributary forming so that is also something that may be faced and yes uh in due time um that settles into the ability to to focus on his indoors means at once because at that time when there is still a lot of chaos when we are still in our unhealed state um there are these indoors that we will experience in those in general like being good at a lot of things but um but being unable to have a center of focus where we can do as is in door until we see them through. So we usually leave things half done at that point. So it is a sign of Kuba. Something needs to be anchored. We need to find a center of focus. And also a feeling, a sensation of something rising up the spine. This is what we call Kundalini energy. Umbilini. This is a divine feminine energy that rises from the base of the spine to the crown of the head where our divine feminine will meet our divine masculine and that will be a complete circuit that will symbolize completion so um, this sensation is usually misinterpreted sometimes as isilwane um i think we have um we, 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 we have Ilanduga where we interpret anything that seems foreign or something that does not that seems unusual as something that is evil as Uba is but in this case sometimes it's simply Kundalini energy and like I said Inzuza is a feminine expression it is a feminine energy so when this feeling occurs it may be accompanied by a warm sensation or it may be a cold sensation this is Kundalini and it is usually followed by heightened sensations, heightened psychic senses, heightened intuition, heightened creativity, and heightened emotions. Because all this is some, all these are isn't all that are feminine. So when that happens, if that happens to you, it is nothing bad. It is simply divine feminine energy that is um, going on its path and rising up the spine to meet with the divine masculine. So this is all I have to say for the for today. <laughs> please do like the video, please subscribe, please share this with anyone else who might benefit from it.